When it comes to SEO, there are so many different things that you have to do if you want to rank on Google. You've got to do keyword research, you've got to build backlinks, you've got to build internal links, you have to optimize pages for the keywords you find, you have to write this content, and a ton more, right? You do it all at once. It can be exhausting and it can be hard to manage all on your own. And the truth is, there are so many tools out there that can help you do all of these things, and I use plenty of them myself, but they can get very expensive paying for all these different softwares. But in this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite SEO tools that I use on a daily basis, and the best part is every single one of these tools is 100% free. I use these for every single one of our agency and consulting clients, and they've helped me rank countless brands on Google's first page and make literally hundreds of thousands of dollars um, via SEO, all right? So let's get into it. Number one, Google Ads Keyword Planner. This is the very first SEO tool I ever used. Um, and though it's meant to be a Google Ads tool, it works very well for SEO as well. Um, it's how I learned at Keyword Research. It works for anyone who's new to SEO and wants to keep their tech stack fairly low cost. It gives you a range of keyword volume, like let's say 1,000 to 5,000 or 50 to 100, as opposed to a tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush, where it give you like a more specific number. Now, this range isn't perfect and it can be difficult to kind of, you know, gauge how much you want to go after a keyword, but if you're new at like if you're new to SEO and you don't want to pay for a tool, like it works. I'm telling you, I use this tool for like a year to rank local service companies and it works just fine. It also doesn't have competition data like or keyword difficulty, which a tool like SEMrush or Ahrefs may have. And though the keyword difficulty tool from those tools can be inaccurate sometimes, it does kind of give you a good baseline or guideline on if you should pursue a keyword or not. So in place of that on Google Ads Keyword Planner, Google Ads gives you up-to-date cost per click data. So the more expensive a keyword is to bid on, the more competitive it is. The less expensive it is to bid on a keyword, the less competitive it is, right? So if you're if you're like just starting out a site, you wanna aim for low cost per clicks. And that'll vary per niche. You know, it could be one or two dollars in certain niches. If you're like a lawyer, that could be like a five or six dollar cost per click. Tool number two, Screaming Frog. If you do technical SEO, this is a tool you will practically live in, I think. It's a desktop app that runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It is probably the most comprehensive website crawler on the internet for SEO tools, as far as I'm aware. I'm sure there's other, others out there, but like for most use cases, it's the best one. It's built to help SEOs and website owners analyze and audit every element of their site's technical, technical SEO. It pretty much emulates the way that search engines like Google or Bing crawl your site and it helps you identify technical errors and warnings that will negatively impact your site's visibility in search. And though there are thousands of use cases within the app, I guarantee you that most users will barely scratch the surface. The biggest things you'll probably use it for are things like broken links, metadata, duplicate content, sitemap errors, and site architecture changes. Going a little bit deeper, it also gives you insights into internal linking, response codes, and URL structures. And it's a pretty invaluable tool for technical SEOs. Our dev at our agency practically lives in this tool. Like this is the one he uses probably 70 to 80% of the time. They have a free forever plan that can crawl up to 500 URLs. Um, so if you get a site that's less than 500 URLs, free, perfect. If you've got a big website and you need more than that, or you're evaluating competitors, for example, um, you can get a site license for $269 a year. But honestly, like most websites probably aren't above 500 URLs, especially once you just get down to the HTML pages. Another free tool, really great. Number three, SiteLiner. So sticking with the technical SEO tools for a second here, SiteLiner's primary function is to help you address duplicate content and visualize site architecture. It also, like Screaming Frog and many other technical SEO tools, reports on broken links, long or unnecessary redirect chains, as well as user experience metrics like average page size, load time, and the number words per page, which can be a ranking factor in on certain keywords. Perhaps one of the most underutilized features of the tool is probably the page power report, which essentially shows which pages are more important or most important or valuable or valued by search engines. This would be the equivalent to like an individual page rating or page authority score, as opposed to like domain rating. For example, there's like the, the power of that page individually. Once you know what your most powerful pages are, you can leverage them with internal links or content updates to increase your organic traffic and revenue. Number four, schema.org. So this one's not exactly a tool per se, more of like an open source community, I'd say, um, but it's a great resource to learn about all things structured data. It's probably the best place to learn it, in my opinion. Schema really helps search engines better understand and interpret the content of each of your pages, right? So like set up schema for like a recipe page or a product page or an FAQ page. There's like hundreds of types of schema, I believe. And you know, you can set a schema on each of these pages and it'll not only will the content indicate what your page is about, but the schema also will help Google kind of contextualize it in the scheme of your entire website. It's not like a direct ranking factor, so to speak, but it can help you earn rich results in search like snippets, um, product ratings, and product information 
like price, size, things like that. And these show up directly in the search results, which can give you greater visibility over your competitors and likely boost your click-through rate. Number five, KW Optimizer, Keyword Optimizer. Honestly, free or paid, this is one of my favorite SEO tools, and I just learned about it a handful of months ago. The way it works is essentially you choose a page that you want to optimize or update. So let's say it's a blog post. You go to Google Search Console and find the keyword data, the query data for that particular blog post, right? You then download the Excel file, upload it in the Keyword Optimizer, and then plug your blog URL in. After you set a few filters, you can see exactly which queries that you receive clicks and impressions for, but don't explicitly appear right on the page. Essentially what it does is it shows you queries that Google is ranking you for, or at least giving you clicks and impressions for, even if you haven't directly added those particular queries to the page. So you then go back to the, the blog post itself and you'll add these queries into the content and you'll start to see a major boost within like two to three weeks usually. Whenever we bring on a new brand or we go through our like updating cycle, which is like every four to six months generally, we use this tool to update every single blog, um, product and collection page that is not ranking quite as high as we'd like to. Um, most recently, we increased an e-com store's organic search traffic by literally 50% in 30 days. And all we did was to use the keyword optimizer tool and go back and like surgically alter the copy based off of the feedback we were getting from the tool. Highly recommend. I cannot believe it's free. I don't know if it'll be free forever. Definitely will get the use in while you can. Number six, answer the public. So one of the quickest and easiest ways to find blog topic ideas for your website is to type your target keyword into Google and scroll down to the people also ask section. These are real questions that people are asking regularly about whatever keyword you might have. You can obviously click on them and, and you'll get the answer and then Google will give you more similar questions, right? And you just keep expanding on them. But not every single SERP has this particular feature and some of the questions aren't always there. Now, Ants the Public makes this process much easier and a little bit more streamlined, I think. It gives you, you just enter your target keyword, it gives you access to tons of questions and queries around that keyword. It'll give you even things like prepositions, um, comparisons like keyword versus other keyword or like X versus Y type deal. Um, and all of these you can use to build a content strategy. You can either write full on blogs or articles about like whatever these questions may be, or if they need to be like an H2 or an H3 or an FAQ in an existing blog, then you can put them in there as well. So you can either create your own content, create wholly new content with them or find a way to integrate them with existing content or content you're going to create in the future. Number seven, ChatGPT. Everyone in SEO and really every industry online is using ChatGPT. Honestly, I don't recommend using ChatGPT to write content at scale, though we've built a few custom GPTs internally with our team. And the way they function is to build content briefs. We analyze competitor blog content and collection page content. After we draft blog content, we will evaluate our drafts against the competitors directly in that search result. We even use to update content later on, like in that four to six month range that I mentioned earlier. So ChatGPT is, you sh you're dumb if you're not using it. Like you should be using it for everything, not everything. You should be using it for a lot, but don't just like let it generate your content. Like find better ways to use it and streamline your systems to save you time as opposed to using it as just a crutch to write your content. Number eight, detailed SEO. This is probably my most used Chrome plugin, hands down, like most used. This is free, again. Easily, you just pull up whatever page you want on the internet and it will easily tell you, quickly tell you the meta title, meta description, heading structure, number of links, internal and external links, plus the anchors they're using, schema and social media information about any page on any website. I think there's actually more things you can do with it. Truth be told, I use it mostly for the meta title, heading structure and the internal and external linking just to see what people are doing and also what our site looks like. Um, but there's so many other things you can do with it and it's free. So definitely worth adding, it's very handy. Number nine is Google Search Console. So if you've done SEO for any amount of time, You've probably spent a lot of time in GA4 or Google Search, Google Search Console. I personally prefer Google Search Console, especially with the GA4 update. It's probably my most used tool for analytics. It gives you, you know, very quickly the information on how your site is performing in Google Search. You can see number of clicks, impressions, average ranking, click-through rate on any single query or page on your website, which is awesome. It's so much data. You can adjust the dates. So you can review last seven days, last 30 days, last, I think you go all the way up to 16 months and you can compare year over year. You can compare this period to last period or even custom dates. Really handy. Basically what I use it mostly for is to find out which queries and pages are driving the most traffic and which ones need a bit of a boost. And then we will adjust or formulate a content a SEO strategy around those. It also helps monitor technical issues and backlinks as well as user experience stuff. So can be useful for that, but should be told I use it mostly for the queries and page data. And number 10, Google Analytics. 
So Google Analytics now GA4 is the most comprehensive, I would say, analytics tool on the market, though I and I know many others have pretty mixed feelings about the new user, the interface and amount of data you can really get out of GA4, but it does give you all kinds of data into individual page and campaign performance for all of your channels, including SEO. You can track conversion data to see which products are doing the best. You can look at landing pages and exit pages. You can look at full customer journeys, all these different things. And it really can be helpful. I think GA4 is far more confusing than the old Google Analytics. And I know a lot of people have switched over to just like Shopify Analytics or third-party tools, but you know, GA4 is still free. So it's gotta be on the list. Like we use it all the time. So you now have all the tools you need to start doing SEO and ranking on Google and again, all of these are zero dollars, so you've not added any money or not added any investment, right? It's great. Check out this full guide that I made that will teach you everything you need to know how to rank first on Google with these tools. Just click on the pop-up to go watch that. I also recently launched a consulting program for any brands that need help with their SEO. Or if you want to have a quick chat with me about working with my SEO agency, book a call. Both links are in the description. Peace.